but better position. So let's say this is not a great position for the, um, the game. So what, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can actually click on uh, this icon to move it, and it brings up these three arrows, which are basically X, Y, and Z. So I can take this and I can just move it, you see? Um, so there are multiple ways I'll show you how, to, how you can move something. So this, this is going to take me some time to move it like in front of the mountains, right? So if, when you move it, um, you can see in the transform there that position X is changing. So at the same time, I can actually go to this position X and I can type something in here, right? So I can actually type, let's say, you know, 50, and it's moved over, it's moved over you know, 50 units basically to the side. Um, as well, you can actually drag, if you see the mouse when you go up, uh, next to it, you can actually you know, move back and forth like that and it's change the number, okay? Um, the best thing I've noticed for uh, moving things into the right position, this is the uh, best tip I could uh, find, is it might take me a long time to try to get this camera exactly where I want it. Um, rather, what I can do is actually just kind of go to the position that I want, I want to move the camera for now, and I can save this, uh, this menu option. Let's get it over right here. You can go to Game Object, and what happens is, first I'm highlighting the camera, which is somewhere else, right? Somewhere else in the scene. I can say Game Object, and I can say Align with the View. So I click that, and what happened is the camera moved like exactly where, exactly where I was, right? So this is a big tip, because you'll probably be doing that a decent amount, at least with the camera, you'll definitely be moving it you know, into position like that. Okay, directional lights. So every scene includes a light. You can see in this example here that someone else created, you can have multiple lights, okay? Um, obviously, this is just going to give you shadows. It's just going to apply you know, just a, a nice touch to your application. Um, what I want to show you though is kind of cool. So every, every, uh, every level includes this light for you. If I rotate this, I saw this like last night. Um, basically, when you, you rotate something, you, again, you can go through the transform and rotate it. Or you can go to this icon here to rotate it, and then it gives you these, it gives you these nice, uh, you know, draggable things. Watch what happens to the sky, like I, uh, if I can do this right, or is it like this, yeah. So it actually will automatically get to nighttime, um, just from changing the sun. So it's, it's hard to see this light, it's, I'm zooming into it, it's hard to tell, but it basically has rays, and it has rays extending from it right now. Um, so if I, if I move it, I'm basically telling the world that, hey, the sun is down right now, and it's coming back up. So what I noticed was, uh, let's see if I can get this to work. Right Zoomed it up, or rotate it up. It actually has the sun as well. So I mean, all this stuff is coming for free, right? So you can definitely get some asset package and stuff. But this was really cool for me to see where I'm like kind of changing the directional light, and it also will change the time of day for you on the fly. And of course, you can also do things to animate this, right? So we're um, we're talking about the rotation here. We're going to get into this, but over time, you could change the rotation, let's say, of the game as the game is being played. You could get the sun basically to come up and go back down while you're playing it. Okay, so the application has something called a scene and a game view. So whatever we were looking at right now, it was basically the scene view of the application. Um, it also has a game view of the application. So this is basically you know, what, what you're going to execute and what you're going to play. Um, let me show you guys that really quick before we move on. So this is the scene view. We're kind of dragging stuff around. We're looking. And in order to play the game, actually, you just press this play button. And it now goes to the main camera, and the game has started. So we haven't programmed anything, right? So really, there's nothing that we can do right now. Um, it's just kind of showing you where the main camera is, right? Um, but this is basically what the game view is versus the scene view. So I kind of call this the debugger, OK? Um, because while you're in this play mode, you can go back to your scene, and you can make some changes on the fly. Like while you're playing the game, you can say, well, I want to make a terrain here, or I want to move some of these objects over here. Uh, we'll talk about this again very shortly, but basically, you probably don't want to do that because what happens in the debugger when, I, when, you, stop, when you stop playing the game, it, it moves all the objects back to what they were before you started playing. So it's kind of like just a debugger, right? Like if you want to make some, you want to see how something looks when it's bigger, you might do that, but when you let go of play, it's gonna, it's gonna revert itself back. So you got to be careful. Um, okay, so uh, has anyone here done game programming before, like in any, in any, in any scenario? Okay, so in game programming, there's something called a game loop, right? So this is interesting to me even when I first started learning game programming is some, there's a loop running in the background constantly, and it's running for every object actually that's in your game, okay? So this is executing uh, either every frame or even faster than that, okay? So you have to be cognizant, like when you're um, writing stuff, it's, I'm not there yet even myself, but you have to be cognizant kind of what, you're, what code you're writing and where you're putting it because you're possibly um, putting code where it's executing so, so many times that it's going to slow your application down. Um, 
you know, so uh, what happens is every frame, roughly, um, you can do something, let's say. So in, in every frame that executes, there will be a method provided for you that lets you change the game a little bit. So let's say every frame you want to you wanna move someone from this position to that door, you're probably going to move him in some coordinates, right? So if that's the x coordinate or a positive x coordinate in the world, in my method I might say plus 0.1, let's say. I might say plus 0.1 every frame, and I'm going to slowly move that way. If I wanted to move faster than that, I would have something faster than 0.1. I'd have something greater than 0.1, right? I'd have something like, let's say, 1 or 2. I'll, move, I'll be moving faster that way. So we're going to get into that um, later, but basically that's what a game loop is. It's something running constantly um, as fast as possible for the most part uh, every frame. In the debugger, um, I think we just showed this right now, so we can skip that demo, but the, uh, you can go one frame at a time. So because you have a method that's executing all the time, you can actually, um, you press play here when we actually have a game, you can press this button here, which is basically just like a, you know, a video camera. You're saying, I want to go, I want to pause it, but I want to go one frame at a time and see what happens. This helps with debugging because a lot of the 3D programming that you're going to do is, is going to deal with uh, physics. So you, you kind of want to see like, what happens right when the two things collide, what, um, what's my code execute, and what happens after that. Um, so that's that. Okay, so the project window, um, I call this basically the solution file. It's where your, uh, all of your artifacts are. So if we go to the project window, what's in there right now? Um, just our terrain. So we're going to basically uh, be, so this scene is uh, basically one level, right? So we have all the objects in this scene up here. If you want to create another scene, you would, um, it's going to get stored over in this project window over down here, and it's going to actually end up in the assets folder. So if you have two scenes, basically, let's, let's go ahead and save the scene so I can kind of demonstrate that. Um, one thing I noticed with Unity as most Microsoft products is you, you kind of want to save as much as you can. Um, it might crash on you, so. <laughs> So basically, here's my first scene right now. If I do create another scene, this is basically, to me, this is more of like my solution, my Visual Studio solution, where I have multiple projects kind of running around in there. Um, I'll have another scene here that'll say, you know, uh, my level two or whatever the heck it will say. And you can swap back and forth between them then. Like, you can double click on one and then you'll open up that scene. You can double click on another and you'll open, you know, whatever other scene. So that's what the project window is. It's more of a solution level. Okay, so we talked briefly about the asset store. Um, there are completed projects in there. There's both free and paid, you know, uh, paid things that you can download in there. And all of them come as a file called .unity package, which is basically a zip file of all the stuff that they kind of want to provide you. Um, I want to show you guys a demo then. I think my internet's not working here, but I've downloaded the package just to demonstrate kind of how you would, how you would import a package. So once again, your assets here, if you right click on your assets, you can say import package. And remember when we started a new project, it said, hey, what, what packages do you want me to include for you? You want this environment package? Like, they're all over here again. Like, Unity gives you the build, some free packages by default, all right? So here I've downloaded one from the asset store. So I don't have the internet. Like I said, I can't show that to you. But I've downloaded it already for you. So we're, we're going to say import custom package. And we're going to go find it. And assets. So I downloaded this package that basically includes sky textures. So right now, Unity already has a sky texture for you. It's important right now. Um, we're going we're to say, hey, we wanna, we're want we creating a game. You know, let's go ahead and change the texture for the sky. Well, the first thing is when you import the package, you'll see is it's saying, hey, these are all the things that are in the package. Are you sure you want me to import all of them into your project? Like, in this case, it's probably you know, maybe 10 or 15 megabytes of some files, right? So I could say I don't want Deep Space Blue, whatever that is. But for now, I'm going to say I want everything. Just import everything that you can. Um, I'll click import. <clears throat> so what it's doing is basically unzipping the uh, you know zip file basically and moving all these files into our into our project now, so we can use them. And it should appear I think somewhere down here as uh, like import or something like that. Okay, it didn't. It, it actually went into just its own folder. One of the better practices of Unity is like to create folder structures to try to organize stuff. So I'm just going to say for now, create new folder, imports, and you can drag and drop stuff. You know, I'm going to take that skybox that you just installed, kind of, and move it into imports, and there it is. All right. So in order to apply the sky, I did put this in the slide note. You have to go to uh, Window, 
lighting. So if we look at through, once again, if I just kind of hover through these menus, we're not going to be able to get through all the options that are kind of sitting in these menus. Um, a lot of times when you want to do something, it's not always super straightforward, kind of like, okay, why would I go to window lighting to change the sky texture when, I, when I'm going somewhere else to do something similar? So it's just a learning, it's a little bit of a learning curve, I think, to it, but it does take a couple hours, I think, and you'll, you'll get the handle uh, on stuff there. So window lighting has this, uh, it brings up this uh, window, and it has something called a skybox. So in, 3D, in a 3D game, basically, what surrounds your whole game here or your application is something called a skybox. So it's basically a big, a big cube, um, and it, you can texture it. So it looks like it's the sky. I mean, it's, it, has a, it has a point in the world that looks like it's infinite, but it's actually just a big uh, polygon sitting there that we want to texture. So I'm, what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll change the texture here. So it's saying, yeah, I'm using the default texture. Let's click on that. And what it does, it says, it says select a material. So it's looking for all the materials in my project right now, or in solution actually, in this assets folder. It's found some stuff that I downloaded. So if I watch this, if I click on one of them, it automatically just applies. So when I first did this, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. Like I, I didn't really feel like I did anything, and it, um, it just applied the sky there. Let's go back to perspective there. So what I've noticed with Unity sometimes is that, yeah, see, now it's picking up the speed. It doesn't, uh, it, sometimes the scroll wheel and some of the mouse positions, it slows down for some reason. So you might hear me like scrolling a lot and it's not moving at all. And sometimes here I'm scrolling just a little bit and it's moving a lot. Like I really don't understand some of that uh, sometimes. But um, I'm going to pick a different texture just for the heck of it. I think I like this one a little bit more. It has like a planet somewhere. I think there it is. So already really quickly, right, we've created a level with just some, and we're not doing anything in it, but we've created some mountains and we've got this really cool background, right? So I mean, I, I was very happy when I had first done this, I'm like, this is really neat compared to other stuff I do for my normal job, so. The hierarchy window, so we've been talking about this briefly, um, everything is a game object that's sitting inside there, okay? So when we look at this little diagram here, Everything inherits from it. So in the normal .NET world, you've got system.object. In the Unity 3D world, you kind of have game object. So anything you're programming with, its base class is relatively going to be the game object. Um, in this diagram here, you can see, OK, when you have lights in the system, they are a game object. When you have 3D models, they're a game object. When you have sprites, they're all a game object. Every uh, game object has a name tag and a transform on it. So I, we did talk about this briefly. I'll go back to it. Um, if we click on the main camera again, We'll minimize these and make it a little clearer. This is the name of the object, this is the tag, and this is the transform that we went over. So again, this is basically the position, rotation, and scale you know, uh, of any object in the system. Um, the name of the object is like the ID, right? So you're creating a web application, it's the ID of the element in the, in the world. And the tag is interesting because it's kind of an attribute. You can give the same tag to multiple objects in the world, okay? So the ID has to be unique, let's say, and the tag could be the same. So why would you do that? Um, it's possible like you have a lot of enemies, let's say, or uh, let's say you have a lot of enemies in the world and you want to just tag them as these are enemies. You can just say, you can create a new tag, which we'll do um, shortly here, and call them enemies. So what you can do then is you can find all the enemies in your world really easily. Um, when you create new enemies, it's going to say enemy one, enemy two, enemy three. It's going to be hard to kind of group them together, right? So it's just a categorization capability. Okay, so what we can see though is we have these game objects that are not doing anything right now. They're not going to do that. Um, they're not doing anything, they're not moving or anything. So how do we actually get these things to be active or you know, get them moving? Um, components are what the key are to the, um, that recipe. What do components add to the uh, system? They add physics behavior, they can add audio, they will add scripts as well. Okay? They give you the capability to add C sharp and attach them to these objects in the world. Um, we have an image here, uh, we'll show this. So we've talked about the transform and basically a lot of these other things that were attached to this object are scripts. There are three scripts sitting there. Okay, so we're gonna create a cube and we're gonna create our first 3D object in this application and we're gonna create a cube and we're gonna give it a tag. Okay, so to create a cube in our world, let's go put it, let's, where, let's see where our main camera is, there it is. Just zooming, it's not going to zoom much, okay. You go up the game app object menu, so there are a lot of objects, right? So I mean, if I go into 3D object right, right now, I said I wanted to create a cube, so I'm going to create a cube. But you can create other stuff, um, cylinder, whatever this ragdoll is, we already created terrain. Um, for now, we're going to create a uh, cube. And there it is, it's sitting right there. So I think we said we wanted to give it uh, a tag name, right? So instead of calling it cube, we're actually going to call these points. So in our game, we're going we're gonna to actually call these points. So if we can get them, basically, we'll get, we'll get some points for those. So we'll say add a tag. So in the tag it says untag, we'll say add a tag. The list is empty, that's fine, let's create one then. Okay. 
now, because I create a point, if I go into tags now, I can see that there's a point there. So now we have a cube in the world. I think that's all I wanted to do in that demo, just to show you that. OK, so even with that cube, again, if I press play, right, it's, it's not doing anything. And that's actually really far away. Let's get the camera moving a little bit closer. Let's put it right here. Game object, align with view, and we'll get you basically the camera right in the position. Is there any possibility of point as a keyword in, in this domain? Like um, it almost sounds like it's, it's like a... Yeah, it, it could be. It could be, but for a tag, because it's a string, it's going to be a string. Um, when we're looking up things by tags, it's really just a string categorization. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, you know, if, uh, if I name this object, maybe, if I name the object a point, maybe there's a possibility. I would still probably think that it's not going to hurt anything, but um, the tag is basically just a string categorization, so there's no way I think the program's going to look for, you know, okay, point needs something else for just this tag name. But good question. Okay, so we're going to start programming because we can see that cube, you know, it's not, it's not doing anything right now. It's just sitting there. And like, this, this is where kind of the fun comes in, I think, when I was doing it. Um, major C-sharp constructs are supported. So if you want to do lambdas, events, and link, etc., you can go ahead and do those. Um, we talked about the physics engine that's already incorporated. Um, we talked about the game loops or per game objects. So if we go back to this, um, each of these objects have a game loop attached to them. So the main camera is firing every frame. It's got a method it's firing as fast as possible, let's say. Same with the cube, it's got something firing, just kind of listening, basically, for something to do. Scripts are a type of component. So if we go back here, these are all the components. When I added a cube, it added all these other components. Remember, the components are the recipe kind to get this thing moving. Um, it already added something called a box collider and a mesh render, whatever these actually are. We don't care right now. Um, it's got the transform already. So the script, though, is going to be just another type of component attached to it. Scripts can be parameterized, right? So you're, I can write a script here. We're going to write a script, but we could pass it some values. If we need, a, we need it to listen to something else or we need to give it a, a, some type of parameter, we can do that. Um, we'll see shortly that when we create a script, it's going to have an update method there for us. This is where we want to do some physics calculations, so I'll, um, we'll show that. So in our demo here, we're going to create a, we're going to make the cube spin, and we're going to try to modify the speed in the debugger. So um, we're, going to make, we're going to make a parameter, we're going to try to modify it while we're playing it, basically. These are some things that we're going to talk about um, briefly here when we're creating the script, uh, what a vector is, and also what a time and uh, what the time delta time means. So to create a script on the cube, uh, what you do basically is you, we click on the uh, game object here, it's the cube, and we just say add component. So again, the script is just a type of component. Um, you can type in here, you can say, hey, I wanna, what type of component do you want to add? I want to add a script. Okay, a new script. What do you want to name the script? We'll call it um, spin script. What's the language? So if you look at the language, we talked about this JavaScript uh, capability, we're going to do C sharp. We'll say create and add. It's already here now, you see. So in the component list, you have spin script, the thing we just added. Now how do we edit it, though? Um, if we double click it, it's going to open Visual Studio. Are you guys able to read this well? Uh, a little, yep. pretty well. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, because I'm at my house, it was difficult to read the font, and you know, that's one of the negatives with Unity is you cannot change the font unless you change your Windows uh, font size. <laughs> Unity does not offer a font size option in any of its uh, settings. Yes. It's very strange. <laughs> Obviously, Visual Studio, you can do a lot of cool stuff like zoom in, zoom out, um, which I need to do here a little bit. So we create a blank script, right? And uh, the first thing it says then is it says. Hey, I'm giving you the start method, I'm giving you an update method for free. Um, we're not going to do anything in the start. This is called once uh, per object in the lifetime cycle for it. So, you know, if you're going to, if you want to initialize some variable or something, you could do it in the start, which we may do later on. For now, we don't need it, so I'm just going to delete it. Uh, update is called once per frame. So this is what we were talking about. So this is going to keep firing uh, every frame, basically, to see if there's something for me to do. Um, so we ask, uh, we ask that we want to spin the cube. So in the spin script, the first question we all might ask is, hey, how do I access the object that I'm attached to, right? Like, I don't see any capability here that say, you know, who, who am I attached to right now? Um, every, every mono behavior provides the case. So when you create a script, it inherits from mono behavior. It automatically provides the ability to let you um, reveal who am I attached to by just typing game object. So that's basically, when I type game object, it is the object that I'm attached to right now. Um, and I can, if I hit dot, you're going to see, of course, all the intelligence of the, the beautiful things that you can do to it. So what, uh, if we go back to the debugger, this will help a little bit. Um, what do we want to do with this cube? We said we wanted to spin it, right? So if we go to the uh, transform, 
you're going to want to spin it on the y axis, let's say. So if I took the y uh, rotation here and I just and I moved it, we can see the cube spinning, right? Um, so it's rotating on the y axis, right? So if I did it on a different axis, let's say I did it on the z axis, what does it do? It goes that's the z axis, right? So you've got the x side to side y like that, and z is going um, in, into the screen basically now on the screen. I'm going to reset these to zero for now. But what you can tell is we're basically saying, hey, I want to I want to do this programmatically. I don't want to have to sit here and you know drag this stuff back and forth. I want this thing to spin you know, programmatically. So we're going to want to do we're going to want to change the rotation on the y axis. So this is how we do that. I'll so change this back to zero. I'll go back to the script. We want to access the transform, right? So that's what we were looking at there. We've got transform there, and we want to do a rotate on it. So I'm going to say, hey, what, what do I type here? Rotate. Okay, cool. Well, what does rotate take? It has a vector three. It has all this other stuff. Axis. I think it has an x, y, z. That might be helpful. You could try doing that this way. This might be a little easier, but I, my demo shows the vector three. So what I'm going to do is new vector three. So even uh, when you do a vector three, it has it has properties as well. So what is a vector three? It's basically it's just a container object. Okay. Um, if I look at the if you look at this here, it says float x, float y, float z. I bet I can go a definition on it. It might, it might show you a little better. It looks a little confusing. 